hello to you. Oh, I didn't know we were having company. Uh, welcome. Uh, take a seat by the... How are we, um... Uh-oh. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. Can you tell which is which? One is a full frame system. One has Fuji colors. Nikon has emerged with red color science. So now they have a filmic look. Which is which? Both have prime lenses. They're both vintage in their touches. Can you see it like, oh, I love the colors of that one or this one. We're both in log. Boom. Wow. Nikon over here. Fuji. Wow. So we have the Fuji X-H2S with the 35mm 1.4 old vintage Fuji touch. And from what I've seen so far, not good. Not, not great. Autofocus performance. A lot worse than I remember. I used to have this camera. I sold it, reacquired it, and it only got worse. But I thought it would be funny to wait. And Fuji's supposed to fix the autofocus with the firmware like they've done the last 17 times and it's only gotten worse. I don't know why this time would be any different, but hello Nikon, you need no firmwares for anything. And Nikon's just beauty. Nikon in my heart has replaced Fuji because you have the red color science and you actually work and you're full frame and you have vintage lenses. Like there's almost no reason to have the Fuji in your life when there's Nikon and Canon and Sony and Panasonic, Olympus, Pentax. In my opinion, there's two reasons that Fuji shooters exist in 2024. There's only two. One, you're still attached to the Fuji color science and you still prefer that look to other companies. There's all the film sims, you're loving it. Even though for video, you want F-Log2 for the most dynamic range so you don't clip your light bulbs and you become a movie with no co-stars. That's fun, you're a movie now, but if you want all the film sims, you can't film in log. So like, yay. So there's the Fuji Color Science and the dynamic range, which seems to match, if not outdo, most full frame cameras. I know it was on par with my a7s3 and that's like class leading nikon you're one of the worst dynamic ranges of all the full frames because you have a semi stacked sensor and for some reason that cripples my ass and that's bullshit so lights it's a cheaper look yeah so right now we're in log for both let us switch to a fuji film sim versus nikon standard color and see what the real science says Okay, God help us, I just went both into aperture priority mode and auto ISO. Nikon has a face exposure thing. It's too confusing, I don't know the proper zebras. Right now that's at 70%, but I noticed in F-Log it wasn't coming on for the face, so I was like, uh oh, I'm lost. So I'm just gonna let you expose. And for you, I had the perfect zebra level for F-Log, but now that I'm in standard, I forget what that one should be. So we're just auto exposing and I'm removing myself from the equation. Or am I? Pretty good. Not so much. I'm gonna go outside against my better judgment and try a slow motion street videography thing with the Fuji. I just, I have a feeling every single shot is gonna be a throwaway. So if you see a little music montage with nothing in focus, that is because I hate you, Fuji. The real question is who has the better 240 frames per second? Cause they can both do it. But I remember the Fuji X-H2S had a terrible noise pattern if it was anything above base ISO. So it was a literal nightmare, but one of them is winning, I do believe.
remote side, get some slow motion street videography with the Fuji. Pray to heaven that even one second is in focus. And then I'll do a little back to back. First the Fuji footage, then the Nikon with the 85mm 1.2. And then I'll do a talking head 3D pop scenario downtown somewhere. Most beautiful scene you've ever seen in your life. And we'll see if this lens has pop and if I'm selling this immediately or have already sold it. Yeah, that's a possibility. How could you do it, Fuji? I don't think one second of anything I just did was in focus. And you know who I blame? You, Fuji. You. It just felt like every time I glanced down at the screen, either the face was blown out completely, or they were blurry as hell, and there were boxes on them. Mysterious boxes. I'm sorry if this shot is too cinematic for our own good, but what we're witnessing now is the glory of Rila Ace and Fire. Brought together as Fuji tracks us, 3D pop, it's here. Most poppy lens, can I just say, so I looked over all that footage, just in home. Why is this so sharp? I thought this was like a character lens that wasn't like goofy sharpness. All I can see is every pore in my face. Fuji has a redness to the skin. That's not right. We're in super fast autofocus now because you can't keep up with anything ever. But is it too fast and jerky? And like, oh my God. It's better. So we're two tracking and five speed. Not bad, not bad. Just a side rant. When I did all the, I'm switching Nikon to rich tone portrait now. This is standard, this is denim. None of that worked because it was raw and it said on the screen like denim, bro. And then it was like nothing, it's just raw. You can't do that ever. That's a bitch. I gotta be honest with you. When I look in the mirror, I see Nikon colors. My face is like a normal, kind of almost orangey glow. It's not this red heat rash type of thing. It's, I don't know what, what am I doing with this system? Fuji, it's, you get it for the colors and the colors are worse. I should jump in this lake. I did not jump in that lake because I know that I can be this far away from Fuji and you can track me anytime. I'm in focus. This is where you do autofocus tests. Make sure you're 900. I should have stopped down to Tony 11. Ah, that's a bitch. Look at this. Fuji's tracking me. It's the best. All across the frame. You jump in a fire. So I don't think you beat Nikon today, my little Fuji. But maybe Sony, you stand a chance. If you can beat Sony colors, then it's like, okay, there's a, at least a reason to get the damn thing, but 
What's going to happen when I throw you up against my Canon C70? My speed booster, it's coming. He accepted the offer. It's on its way. Freaking November 24th, it's coming. For you, that's not much time. For me, ages. Freaking ages. No, not them in the fancy red shirts, no, me. Oh, I thought I found lighting. Oh, it's gaining on me, there's trees over there. We're in uh, Nostalgic Neg, it's the only one that doesn't make my face look like I was burnt while holding tomatoes, it's bullshit. Fuji color sign, oh, I'm in the shade. Oh, I thought I had more leeway on that one. And I can't even jump up on this thing, I'm out of my own shot. Oh, man, oh, man. Oh, food, I feel so stupid owning you again. I just, I don't see what, I just wanted to have a Fuji in my presence. So whenever Fuji announced something, I film it on a Fuji and I can always, if I have thoughts about Fuji, we film on a Fuji, we talk about a Fuji. But uh, that was a, an expensive mistake. I see no gains. We're at 2.8, by the way. Stop it down. I'm in the shade. Too sharp. Did it at least look glorious? Was there one moment of the street videography that was just like, wow, that moment, it was worth it. It was all worth it. Nikon could never do that. But it seems like Nikon has more dynamic range, better colors, way better autofocus, better everything. The specs, the lenses, they're all modern, but still vintage, way more background blur. Oh man, there's not a lot of reasons that I would recommend you get Fuj, but if we're witnessing any pop with that lens, which is way over sharp and disappointment hell, I thought people were saying it's the best lens ever made. That's a lie, I'm leaving. After you do that, Bitcoin. How you doing? You subscribe for more right now, Santa?